Amen. I, he didn't ask for this. It's just uh, on my heart to do. You know, there, there are patriarchs of this house, and many, many years ago before, probably before I was uh, even a thought in God's mind about being born again, this man and his family built this building. In building this building, I don't think they had any idea that one day we would come back, remodel it, and own it, and he would still be a part of it. Uh, Brother Hicks, uh, I do know that you're in need of prayer, and uh, there's, there's, uh, there's talk of your heart, and you're 74 years old. You, you should have already wore the heart out. You're one of the hardest working men I know. I have deep honor for you and your family. So we want you to know we're going to pray for you this morning, and we will continue to pray for you. I know that there may be an impending heart surgery coming for you. But, uh, you know, he, he, you're, you're a pawpaw to a lot more than just these biological ones you've got running around here. And we want you here a long time. So those, lift your hand, Papa. I want them to see who you are right there. Now I want you to stretch your hand that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the mighty spirit of God, I ask that you touch this man, touch his heart. God, I thank you for healing him. I thank you, God, for being whatever it's going to take to keep him around for as long as we can keep him here. We want it to happen. So we're praying for divine healing, Lord God, for the name of Jesus to work through his life. We give you praise for all the years he served you and blessed others. God, we leave him here in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. Everybody say in the beginning. Amen, amen was Mr. Hicks. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not that old. He's not that old. I, I, I wonder as I wander. As I've wandered through the gospel over 30-something years now, I've wondered. And Christmas, to me, has become far more than what you've ever imagined. It was more than just a baby in a stable who, who we you know, called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. The Scripture says he was in the beginning. So as I look at what Matthew, and I'm, I'm always trying to help teach you, Matthew, Mark, and Luke taught and spoke about what they saw in Jesus when John came along and he wrote his gospel, he wrote it 60 years after them. And you know, the 60 years is quite a long time. And he looked back and he said, you know what? Uh, I know that he came. I know he was born in Bethlehem. Matthew told you that. Mark told you that. Luke told you that. But I'm going to give you another revelation and an understanding by the word of God. And then he says to us, in the beginning, the word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. And he's not just talking about a literal book here, this Word, but he's talking about first the Logos. It's, it's two different words, Logos and Rhema, that the Logos, the written Word, became Rhema alive. You, you've, 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 uh, you've seen books on audio where they take a book, you can go into Cracker Barrel, and you can get a book on audio, and you listen to a, a well-known speaker I'll listen to a commercial, and I'll say, well, that's Liam Nielsen. Or I'll listen to that Arby's commercial. Huh? We got the meat. We got the meat. You know? I just Some guys just have a radio voice. I have a radio face. <laughs> he existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it, can't put it out. One, one scripture said, does not recognize it, doesn't understand it. So when I'm reading the Word of God here and I'm catching it, okay, I said, oh, right now I found you, Jesus. So when you showed up on earth, you were here in the beginning. John chapter 1, verse 14, skip down a few verses, moving quickly, hyperspeed this morning. So the Word became human. There he was. So the Word became human. Made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. We've seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. This is cousin John, who was born before cousin Jesus. And yet John said, He was here before I got here. He had revelation. Boom! He caught it. He understood it. The light bulbs came on. He knew who Jesus was. He wasn't just my cousin. This man right here is the Son of God. So there's some exciting as I'm reading this. Where are we at here? Ah, 
John testified, for from his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. Can you say amen? For the law was given through Moses, but Moses unfa- but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son is himself, God, and is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Everybody say glorious, glorious. mix up. It's a mess, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. I've never made a cake, I, I, but I've watched it done. You take eggs and flour and milk, and you, you mix it up. It's, it's, it's ingredients, and you mix them all together, and it makes a cake. The egg's still there. The flour's still there. The milk's still there. Whatever else you put in there, still there. And God is still that way. And when I read about him, he says the Son was God, and yet God is the Son. And they're together, and there's a Father in heaven, and there's the Holy Spirit that he left for us. It's a glorious mix-up. Do me a favor. Don't try to figure it out. It, it, it messes with your head. You'll, you'll split churches trying to do it. You'll start your own thing. All right? And you'll screw everybody else up. But we understand his heart. He loves us. Father, I love you. I thank you for your mercy, your goodness. I know who you are. I know who you are. And I'm going to tell them about it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Ah, it ain't that I know something you don't know. I know you know it too. Amen. You know, in just these five verses, there are these arresting facts that surface regarding the, the incarnation of our Lord, the mystery by which God became man. We call it Christmas. It's the incarnation. It's literally what the word means. It's, it's him wrapped in flesh. But before there was an incarnation, there was a great condescension. Now, when you say the word condescension in the uh, um, a human race, uh, thinking about it, the Scripture says the word became flesh and took up residence among us. To condescend means to lower oneself to a level not normally occupied. Physically, mentally, or socially, it means to descend voluntarily to the level of another person. And again, with the human race, this is not always done with kindness. Sometimes there is an air of contempt, a snobbery, a haltiness in human condescension. I, I, I pick up on it when I'm around certain preachers. I, 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 I look at myself in the mirror and I say, be careful. Don't be condescending. Don't, you heard somebody say, don't talk down to me. Don't talk down to me. You go into some churches and there's a haltiness, there's an arrogance in businesses and, and other places. And somebody says, I wouldn't shop at Walmart. I go to Jacques Pinet <laughs> at the Palais Royale. You know, we got this idea and this arrogance. And then there's a reverse. It There's a reverse. You know, where we act like, well, forget you arrogant people. I do whatever I want over here. And then and we forget condescending there's two sides to it imagine being god that when you speak things are created he he did things that were amazing and then he realized what a mess we had become with our kings and our queens and our, our uh, hierarchies and, and how we, we messed up and how the Romans were ruling the world and how the, all the different uh, people attacking one another. No, nobody not understanding the name of religion. And God said, this enough. And he wrapped himself in flesh and he condescended. He came down into earth. He put himself into a womb again, again, the most dangerous place for any human being to be on planet Earth is in the womb of their mother. The safest place to be in America, I said it last week, is on death row. Because they'll keep you there and you won't die till they give you an expiration date. They won't let you drive. You don't get killed in a wreck. You don't fly. You don't get killed on a plane. They feed you three meals a day. They take care of you. They'll isolate you to keep others from hurting you. Safe place to be. Somebody said, I want to be safe. Okay. But when I think about this, they could have killed Jesus at nine months. That's why Jesus, that's why God hid him for nine months in a virgin. 
That's why he had Joseph run him all over the place to, so he could escape. But, but the condescending, the fact that he came to earth to do what he did, he performed the greatest act of condescension of all time and eternity. When I look at this other side of it, to be gracious enough and willing to do something regarded as beneath one's dignity, some people will not serve. When Jesus came to earth, he condescending to serve others. He, he washed the feet of the disciples. He told us to do the same. And many times folk won't serve one another because they feel like it's beneath them. Let it get beneath you. Get to a place to understand serving one another is the greatest thing you can ever do. Amen. To be like your Lord, to reach out, wash feet, uh, take out the trash. What can I do for you? Oh, you ought to clap a little more than that. I think about what he did. With such limitless power, the Word of God condescended to be compressed, squeezed. You, you ever get to, I, I, we, we shot a couple of deer the other day, and there was a lot of deer meat. But when we get it back, they're going to squeeze it out in these little vacuum sealed packages. And you'll say, where's the deer I killed? And it's been squeezed into these little bitty packages. And you'll cut it open, and it'll go, Poof. and you eat it, and it's going to go, Poof. It's just get bigger all the time. Amen. And it's amazing what God did. He squeezed himself into the form of a little bald, toothless baby. And when he came out, he walked as us on this earth. In becoming flesh, God accepted the limitations of humanity. He became vulnerable to those natural human weaknesses that accompany our flesh. Hunger, thirst, Physical weariness, pain, sleep, being sleepy, tired, amen, all of these things. He experienced the emotional traumas we experience, disappointment, sorrow, hurt, loneliness, rejection, because Jesus had no sin nature. He did this without the taint of sin. I can tell you, while Jesus committed no sin while he was on earth, he experienced sin in a way that far more was overwhelming than anything that we've dealt with and committed. Why did he cry out in Gethsemane when he said, uh, Father, let this cup pass from me? He meant all things are possible for you. He told his Father, take this cup away from me. What was it about that cup? Jesus was not about to succumb to some temptation to sin. It was worse than that. He was about to drink your sin. My sin. He was fixing to put on the sins of humanity and allow it to come over him even though he did not have any enjoyment of those sins. Amen. So all of that was put upon him. He lived for a while among us. Literally, that means he pitched his tent here. He cast his lot. He moved in with us. Condescended. I want you to rethink that word some. Some of us get mad when they, they, they talk down. I hate, I hate to hear the letter I all the time. I did this, I did that. I'm a wee man. I'm a wee man. We, we. I just something about saying we did this. Well, we, we overcame. We screwed up. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? When, when, when it's me, it's I screwed up, but when we did good, we did well. Sometimes we all messed up, amen. We, we all need help. So it's something about, it's an amazing discovery. Again, I wonder as I wander, as I move around. Verse 14 says, we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Another word of deep significance here of the incarnation is glory. Human beings can achieve, and I mentioned this Tuesday night to you, can achieve. Again, everybody say Tuesday night. Yeah, we got church on Tuesday night. I forget about that, Pastor. Don't forget about that. Only your way to shop stop by here and then go shop some more Human beings can achieve such a great uh, or such a little bit of degree of earthly glory. A person performs some outstanding deed, some benevolent act, or makes a great monetary contrib contribution to a worthy cause. Uh, last night I was staring at a phone at 8 o'clock to see who was going to win the Heisman. It's just momentary glory. I went through my, uh, a bunch of old stuff from the flood. I found trophies of mine. And what did I do with them? I stuck them in a drawer. But when I got them, it was that momentary glory. Hey, look what I've done. But after a while, you just shove them in a drawer. You don't even think about them anymore. All them bowling trophies y'all got. Them dart throwing trophies. I know y'all get them. All them things y'all have won. Amen. Bunko, Pinko, Rolo. Whatever y'all play on Tuesday. Amen. Uh, you know, they just, it's just a momentary glory. 
and it's gone. He left glory. He came here, but he would do things and exhibited who he really was. Amen. For the first time we see the glory of God is when he declares, let there be light. You remember when he said that? I reread it again and again. Genesis 1, verse 3. That, what light was it? It was not a physical light of the sun. He didn't develop the sun and the moon and the stars till around verse 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He didn't do it then. He did it in verse 3 when he said, let there be light and his glory went. We're talking raiders of the lost ark on steroids. He blew it out there. Let there be. In other words, what I'm saying to you, the scripture says he is the light of men. He gave us light. It, it, he, before there was a sun and a moon and all of the things like that, he created light by just saying, let there be light. When he said light, he became light. And things started happening around him. I read that and I'm, I'm shaking my head. My goodness, you're amazing. It was the glory of God in all his heavenly brightness. God's glory filled the earth. Uh, his indescribable beauty. The glory of God appeared next in this mysterious cloud that hovered over the Israelites from the crossing of the Red Sea. They entered the promised land 40 years later. The glory stayed with them. We've seen his glory, John wrote. It's, uh, he wrote of the glory of Jesus coming to earth. It was manifested every time he performed a miracle in his life-changing teachings that arrested the minds of people and convicted them of their own sins. When God saved you, he showed his glory. And now that he's gone, his glory is in you. And every time you do something for him, something glorious takes place. Amen. It's a little bit more light on a dark place. It's a little bit more blessed when you lead somebody to Christ, when you pray for somebody and they get their miracle or, or, or they get the greatest miracle of getting to the kingdom of God. All of them things. It's his glory being shed here on this earth. It's amazing. I, I, I love to see folk get, all of us as parents, we love when our kids get those accolades. Some of you still have all of their paperwork from kindergarten to first grade, second grade, third grade of when they, when they got that award. Oh, he got the he got he got the perfect. He got all A's. Look at this. It's amazing. The older you get, a little that matters, isn't it? Hey, Amen. You got the you got their little se their little seventh place ribbon on the wall in an eight man race. <laughs> it was glorious for a moment. We we just so love it. We we it, we do live for us. I, I I put my son in front of a ten four. 10 point buck two weeks ago I could, that could have been my buck I've shot bucks before you know the, I gotta be careful I am so I am so country I can't even say that that's wrong if I say that no I, I can't do it Charlie I'll get they'll fire me amen uh, but I'll tell you privately later ask me at the door Listen, 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 listen. We beheld his glory. What a discovery. What, what an amazing thing. Jesus reacted. He reacted to human suffering when he healed the sick and he crippled bodies. When he was moved by the tears of women. Amen. He, he did things. Uh, he raised the dead to human hunger. He fed the multitudes. He showed his glory. Verse 18 tells us no one has ever seen God, the only son, the one who was at the Father's side. He has revealed him. Uh, the, the song mentioned, I see the Lord high and lifted up. And Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. What did he, what did he see? He saw his glory. He saw his, his train filled, it meant, it meant his, his robe. It filled, it filled the temple. And I, I said, I'm a man of unclean lips. When I saw his glory, it reminded me how nasty I am, how wicked I am, how evil I am. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. And the Scripture says an angel took a coal off the altar and touched it to his lips, and the statement was, here I am, send me. Moses had the same thing going on in his life. Moses was struggling. He wanted to see God. He said, I've been following you. I've been doing what you've asked me. I've heard your voice. I've seen the miracles. God, everything about you. But I'm feeling this extreme loneliness and sense of failure. He said, every leader feels this at times. Moses believed that if he could only see God's glory, he could press on. In my life, I say, God, if I can only see you in the life of the people I pastor and the people around me, if I can see a little bit of your glory in my life, I can press on. 
on. The scripture says that Moses in Exodus 33 verse 18, he said, please let me see your glory. I want to see you, God. God said, I'll make my goodness pass right in front of you. I'll make my goodness pass right in front of you. And then he hit me. Lord, there's a lot of good things passing in front of me. It's your glory. It's your people. And I'm missing it. I'm taking it for granted. It's the good things in life, Dana. It's your son getting a full scholarship to go to the frozen tundra of North Dakota and play baseball. Hallelujah. He's letting his goodness pass in front of you. I'll make it pass. I'll call out, I'll call out the name God right before you. I'll treat, I'll treat well whomever I want to treat well, and I'll be kind to whomever I want to be kind. If you keep reading the story, the glory of God passed me. He said, I'm not going to let you see my face. God did not hide things from you. He hid things for you. And when you get to heaven, you're going to get to see his face. The truth is, when he wrapped himself in flesh, we saw him walking on earth. Now, I know I got to start closing here, so let's get to a conclusion. No man ever spoke like this, the Scripture said. There's a man on the, on beneath the cross, a Roman soldier, he looked at Jesus and he, he concluded this man really was the son of God. He's God's son. Christmas, my friend, is about the great condescension of God wrapping himself in flesh. When we, you miss it when you take him for granted. God himself. Since you're holding that little baby, I want you to imagine that. That God squeezed himself inside of a little baby. And allowed himself to go through all the temptations and the trials and the pains and the sufferings we did so he could learn us, teach us, forgive, forgive one another. You're going to get slighted on this earth, forgive. I saw a football game last week, with Pittsburgh in it, it was a college game. One of the Pitt players brother was murdered by a friend a friend of his he said I knew the boy that shot my brother he said and I had the opportunity and then in the courtroom he said I forgive you and I, I, I just I, I listen to this story and I think about the gospel you're unable to forgive without the love of Christ I, I, I'm convinced of that it was him that taught us how to forgive it was him that told us to forgive, to love one another, just to love one another. You know, Moses brought the law, but he brought grace and truth. Love and forgive one another. It doesn't mean that you just run over people and hurt them to the point where you better forgive me. No, 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 no. It means when we do slight, when we do mess up, when we do hurt, when we do say something out of line, God help us to forgive. When our anger gets the best of us, God help us to forgive. Help us to do that. Indeed, Jesus gave to the world the eternal revelation of who God was, that we belong to him. This was Christmas. Stand with me if you would. I wonder, as I wander out under the sky, how Jesus the Savior did come for us to die. For poor, honorary people, like you and I, I wonder as I wander out under the sky. When Mary birthed Jesus, t'was in a cow's stall with wise men and farmers and shepherds and all. But high from God's heaven, a star's light did fall and the promise of ages it then did recall. If Jesus had wanted for any wee thing, a star in the sky or a bird on the wing, or all of God's angels in heaven for to sing. He surely could have it because he was the king. I wonder as I wander. We are pilgrims. We're passing through. Simply passing through. This is uh, not our home as of yet. I don't know if God's going to redo something down here and put us back. I don't know what he's got planned. I'm lying, I, I'm lying if I tell you I do. Scripture said it would be a new heaven and a new earth. Our prayer is if it's a new earth, we just pray there's bigger deer. You know, we just love life here. We just love life here. 
The goodness of God is set in front of you, behind you, and around you. He makes his goodness pass. He wrapped himself in flesh. That's Christmas. Amen. Your heads bow for just a moment. Those watching through the internet, I want to pray with you also. It's my hope that you gain revelation this Christmas. That literally it begins to wrap around you. As you give gifts, as the wise men did to Christ, as you understand that God gave his greatest gift when he squeezed himself in flesh and came and walked among us. My prayer is for revelation. You say, Pastor, I want the word of God to become more and more clear to me. I want the keys to the kingdom, as Tony sang. I want that more than anything else. I want the word to become alive. Slip your hand up, fetch you. I just want the word to come alive. Man, I want to be reminded as I move through life. I want it to come alive. Father, in the name of Jesus, these hands that are lifted, I'm praying that you just cover them. Let the word come alive. For some of us, it's just been religion. Me religion. I see it in their face, Lord. It's just been religion. But others, it's about relationship. They're figuring it out. They're catching this thing, Lord. They're getting hold of it. That you, 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 you. You want to be our God. We want to be your people. God, teach us, walk with us, forgive us, strengthen us. We need it all. And Lord, let your glory pass before us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a quick praise. Amen. As our servant leaders are coming up, because I'm going to hit time barrier here and i apologize for that but again those watching us online thanks for tuning in tell somebody else about it you can email us you can find an email address uh, holywildministries.com let us know you're watching if you want to give amen there's a place there on our website for you to give and work with us and uh you know if you're a long way away i may not be able to come to your wedding or your funeral but we still let you give to this ministry if you want to Amen. We're going to release you to be able to do that. If you need to tie the offering envelope, your faithfulness in giving, consistent giving all year long has made all of this possible. To our guests that are here, you're under no compulsion to give. You know that. But we thank you for coming, and we would love to have you come back. Amen. Two or three times, like I say, when you show up, pray up and give up. It's your house. Amen. This becomes your pew. Somebody sent me a message this week. Pastor, I know a church has got more pews. You need pews. I said, are you kidding? I want no more pews. We're fine. These are nice. We're going to wear these out. Hallelujah. David, as you come, let me mention, guys, in the back, several things. First, you do have uh, Tony's. Do you enjoy his music? It's, it's just different. But, man, he's so powerful. I was there when Tony wrote that song. I was in the service of the preaching that he heard that he was so inspired to go and write that song. A song full of gospel, the kingdom. So, and he has some on leadership, so it's in the back. And also, guys, for the, for the small price of $4.99, we have a picture of me. That's a joke. These are free. All right? I, I would never get, sell a picture of me. But my dog is worth the price of admission, I'm telling you right now. Uh, he's a good-looking dog. There are three, three very important things on this picture, my dog and my two grandkids. Amen. They're the ones on here. But it's many people ask, they say, Pastor, because we've done this every year. We've tried to get pictures out for people. Our family has grown, as you can see. And, uh, and we, I don't know if we even got one out last year. I can't remember. I don't think so. Because it's been harder to get the kids together. But we were able to get them together. They got a picture made. You put it on your refrigerator. My hope is that you use it to pray for us. When you see that, yeah, that, that family of mine, you pray for us. Amen. As our staff, pray, they, they, they pray. I know that. David, love you. Everybody got an envelope in 81? You sure? You can just put TLCC. Thank you. I think you pretty much. Oh, $25 gift cards in the back. Um, please donate $25 gift cards for the uh, fellow brothers and sisters in need for Christmas season. Obviously, we all know people that need it. Um, and I don't know who's going to be in charge here. Just Okay, he said just throw them in a bucket. Okay, there you go. We already got people calling. Um, 
And then just to help out, uh, now Taden's Pantry's food holiday blessing. Sign up to receive holiday meals. If you or you know somebody that needs a holiday meal, let us know. We can't help you if we don't know, okay? Uh, you got to let us know. We, we really want to help people. December 16th, um, the children's ministry is doing a nursing home visit. Uh, Pastor talks about it all the time, the power of touch. When these young people go in there and they just love on these old people, it lights them up. They get excited again. It gives them a reason to say, oh, yeah. And then not only that, it stirs memories of when they had their kids and their grandkids. And so, man, you, you don't know what a blessing it is to them to be able to have young people come in, give them cookies, uh, that probably just the diabetes speaking, but it doesn't matter. You know, it's cool. Um, 25th of December and January 1st, there will be no services on Tuesday night, but that Wednesday's directly after, there will be, okay? So the 26th and the 2nd, there will be services here. Today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commissions, gifts and mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Thank you, brother. Enjoyed it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so very much for the opportunity to be in this house, Father. We always say thank you, Father God. Father, as we go our way this season, Father, sometimes it may be a little bit aggravating, but help us to always remember, Father God, that the closest distance between us is a smile, Father God. It'll get us there. Continue to watch over your people until we meet again. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.